The Gemara also transliterated Gemora, Gemara, or, less commonly, Gemora, from Hebrew Gemar, from the Aramaic verb gemar, study, is the component of the Talmud comprising rabbinical analysis of and commentary on the Mishnah. After the Mishnah was published by Judah the Prince c. 200 CE, the work was studied exhaustively by generation after generation of rabbis in Babylonia and the land of Israel. Their discussions were written down in a series of books that became the Gemara, which when combined with the Mishnah constituted the Talmud. There are two versions of the Gemara. The Jerusalem Talmud, Talmud Yerushalmi was compiled by scholars of the land of Israel, primarily of the academies of Tiberias and Caesarea, and was published between about 350–400 CE. The Talmud Bavli was published about 500 CE by scholars of Babylonia, primarily of the academies of Sura, Pumbedita, and Mata Mahasia. By convention, a reference to the Gemara, or Talmud, without further qualification, refers to the Babylonian version. The main compilers were Ravina and Rav Ashi, see Talmud. Topic. Gemara and Mishnah The Gemara and the Mishnah together make up the Talmud. The Talmud thus comprises two components, the Mishnah, the core text, and the Gemara, analysis and commentary which completes the Talmud see structure of the Talmud. The rabbis of the Mishnah are known as Tanaim sing. Tana Tennessee. The rabbis of the Gemara are referred to as Amoraim sing. Amora Mur. Because there are two Gemaras, there are in fact two Talmuds, the Jerusalem Talmud Hebrew. Talmud Yerushalmi, and the Babylonian Talmud Hebrew, Talmud Bavli, corresponding to the Jerusalem Gemara and the Babylonian Gemara, both share the same Mishnah. The Gemara is mostly written in Aramaic, the Jerusalem Gemara in Western Aramaic and the Babylonian in Eastern Aramaic, but both contain portions in Hebrew. Sometimes the language changes in the middle of a story. Origins of the word In a narrow sense, the word Gemara refers to the mastery and transmission of existing tradition, as opposed to severa, which means the deriving of new results by logic. Both activities are represented in the Gemara as a literary work. The term Gemara for the activity of study is far older than its use as a description of any text, thus Perk Avot ch. 5, a work long preceding the recording of the Talmud, recommends starting Mishnah at the age of 10 and Gemara at the age of 15. Topic. The Sugya The analysis of the Amoraim is generally focused on clarifying the positions, words and views of the Tanaim. These debates and exchanges form the building blocks of the Gemara. The name for such a passage of Gemara is a sugya, swaji plural sugat. A sugya will typically comprise a detailed proof based elaboration of the Mishnah. Every aspect of the Mishnaic text is treated as a subject of close investigation. This analysis is aimed at an exhaustive understanding of the Mishnah's full meaning. In the Talmud, a sugya is presented as a series of responsive hypotheses and questions, with the Talmudic text as a record of each step in the process of reasoning and derivation. The Gemara thus takes the form of a dialectical exchange. By contrast, the Mishnah states concluded legal opinions, and often differences in opinion between the Tanaim. There is little dialogue. The disputants here are termed the Makshan, questioner, one who raises a difficulty, and Tartsan, answerer, one who puts straight. The Gemara records the semantic disagreements between Tanaim and Amoraim. Some of these debates were actually conducted by the Amoraim, though many of them are hypothetically reconstructed by the Talmud's redactors, often imputing a view to an earlier authority as to how he may have answered a question. This is what Rabbi X could have argued. Rarely are debates formally closed. Topic. Argumentation and debate The distinctive character of the Gemara derives largely from the intricate use of argumentation and debate, described above. In each sugya, either participant may cite scriptural, mishnaic and amoric proof to build a logical support for their respective opinions. The process of deduction required to derive a conclusion from a proof text is often logically complex and indirect. 
Confronted with a statement on any subject, the Talmudic student will proceed to raise a series of questions before he satisfies himself of having understood its full meaning. This analysis is often described as mathematical. In approach, Aidan Steinsaltz makes the analogy of the Amoraim as scientists investigating the Halakha, where the Tanakh, Mishnah, Tosefta, and Midrash are the phenomena studied. Topic: <laughs> Proof texts. Proof texts quoted to corroborate or disprove the respective opinions and theories will include verses from the Tanakh, the exact language employed is regarded as significant, other Mishnayo, cross references to analogous cases, or to parallel reasoning by the Tana in question, Baraito Bert uncodified Mishnayo, which are also sources of halakha, lit, outside material, sing, Baraita Bryat, references to opinions and cases in the Tosefta. Tusped references to the Halakhic Midrash Mekhilta, Sifra and Cipher. Cross references to other Sugat, again to analogous cases or logic. Topic. Questions addressed The actual debate will usually center on the following categories Topic. Language why does the Mishnah use one word rather than another? If a statement is not clear enough, the Gemara seeks to clarify the Mishnah's intention. Topic. Logic Exploring the logical principles underlying the Mishnah's statements, and showing how different understandings of the Mishnah's reasons could lead to differences in their practical application. What underlying principle is entailed in a statement of fact or in a specific instance brought as an illustration? If a statement appears obvious, the Gemara seeks the logical reason for its necessity. It seeks to answer under which circumstances a statement is true, and what qualifications are permissible. All statements are examined for internal consistency. Topic. Legal Resolving contradictions, perceived or actual, between different statements in the Mishnah, or between the Mishnah and other traditions, e.g., by stating that, two conflicting sources are dealing with differing circumstances, or that they represent the views of different rabbis. Do certain authorities differ or not? If they do, why do they differ? If a principle is presented as a generalization, the Gemara clarifies how much is included, if an exception, how much is excluded. Topic. Biblical exposition Demonstrating how the Mishnah's rulings or disputes, derive from interpretations of biblical texts. The Gemara will often ask where in the Torah the Mishnah derives a particular law. See Talmudic hermeneutics. See also Daf Yomi The Kala Month Hadron Talmud Jerusalem Talmud Oral Law in Judaism Siam Hashes Topic Further Reading Gemara Jewish Encyclopedia Gemara Professor Eliezer Siegel Maimonides Introduction to the Mishnah Torah English Translation Mevo Ha Talmud, Samuel Ha Najid. Talmudic Method, Harry Ostrin Wolfson. The Essential Talmud, 30th Anniversary Edition, Aidan Steinsaltz. Basic Books, 2006. ISBN 0 465 08273 4. Read more here. See also here. The Talmud, a Reference Guide, Aidan Steinsaltz. Random House, 1996. ISBN 0-679-77367-3 Read more here. Introduction to the Talmud and Midrash, H. L. Strack and G. Stemberger Fortress Press, 1992. ISBN 0-567-09509-6 The Infinite Chain, Torah, Masara, and Man, Nathan T. Lopez Cardozo Targum Press distributed by Philip Feldheim, 1989. ISBN 978-0-944070-15-4 References
Topic: External links. Point-by-point -point summary and discussion of the Gemara. Gemara marking system: keys to structure. Daf a week: a project to study a daf per week. The complete Babylonian Talmud Aramaic, Hebrew, as scanned images of the pages. The complete Babylonian Talmud Aramaic, Hebrew, as text. Also available from other sites. A printable chart with listings of all dapim from each mezikta. Gemara brochos. Shema, Tefillah and brochos. Daily Gemara by Rabbi Eli Mansur. Gemara. New International Encyclopedia, 1906.